Good evening and welcome to the fight for the title, the Premier League Live on the second of two, uh, three nights uh, of Premier League action this midweek. Five games yesterday, two games already underway tonight and the 8.15 kickoff. Manchester City in third against fourth placed Aston Villa. We will see who will uh, face off between those two very shortly. We'll get the team news for you uh, from that game in a moment or two. Uh, but there are two uh, 7.30 kickoffs this evening. One from the Emirates, another title chaser in uh, action tonight. Arsenal hosting Luton. Arsenal leading by one goal to nil after 32 minutes. And Brentford and Brighton uh, battling it out uh, in... Uh, London as well, in the capital, uh, at the GTEC Community Stadium. And it is still goalless between those two sides early on in that one. We're going to run you through the team news from both of those games before we talk about uh, our late game this evening, where there's some interesting team news as well uh, from the Etihad. We'll bring that to you uh, very shortly. But for Arsenal... There's big team news for them. Uh, the big news from the Arsenal dressing room is the absence of Bukayo Saka. Now, there was a few rumours that he wasn't going to be involved. Well, he isn't involved at all uh, for uh, Arsenal this evening. And he's not even uh, on the bench after being subbed at Manchester City uh, on Sunday afternoon. Five changes in total for Arsenal. Thomas Partey makes his first Premier League start since the end of August. While Emil Smith-Rowe, Leandro Trossard, Rhys Nelson and Alexander Zinchenko all come into the starting 11. Jakub Kivior, Jorginho, Declan Rice and Gabriel Jesus drop to the bench for this one. Some big changes for Mikel Arteta, including that one of no involvement for Bukayo Saka in the squad at all for Arsenal tonight, which is a huge uh, miss for the Gunners. On the bench for Arsenal tonight, Ramsdale, Jesus, Martinelli, Nketiah, Kivior, Tommy Yasu, Jorginho Vieira and Declan Rice as well. For Luton, and Luton already 1-0 down, uh, but they were 1-0 up uh, after their uh, early in that game in North London a few days ago uh, against Tottenham uh, on Saturday. They went on to lose 2-1 in that one, but Ro uh, Rob Edwards uh, has made uh, some big uh, enforced changes, of course, due to injuries. The good news is, though, Alfie Doughty, who was a doubt for the game, he has recovered from a knock, and he starts this evening. Reese Burke, though, is not involved. Tahith Chong only fit enough for the bench. Jordan Clark and Daiki Hashioka both return to the starting eleven, while midfielder Fred Onyedinma makes his first Premier League start, and we think he makes his uh, start at right wing back this evening for Luton. And Luton's bench features 16-year-old schoolboy defender Christian at uh, Chigozi uh, this evening. So the Luton uh, ben, uh, team is as follows. Kaminsky, Hashioka, Mengi, Kabore, Townsend, Panzu, Barkley, Dossi, Clark, Onyedinma and Morris. On the bench, Shea, Berry, Woodrow, Chong, Krull, Johnson, Nelson, Piersold and Chig Chigozi. Of course, uh, Sambi Lakonga cannot uh, be involved this evening due to uh, him play would be playing his parent club, which is not allowed, of course. The other uh, 7.30 kickoff tonight between Brentford and Brighton. Uh, still goalless at the moment. We'll let you know if anything changes in that one. But no score as of yet as Arsenal are pushing for a second there. But they just blocked off by Luton. Uh, Brentford unchanged uh, from the side which started the 1-1 draw against Manchester United on Saturday. They left very late uh, for both of those goals in that 1-1 draw. That means Brandon Bermo was still waiting for his first start since sustaining an ankle injury during the reverse fixture against Brighton uh, in December. Sergio Ridge Sergio Reggion is also on the bench after serving a ban. So the Brentford team, Flecken, Zanka, Ayer, Collins, Rushlev, Jensen, Janelt, Jarmiluk, Lewis Potter, Tony and Vissa. On the bench for Brentford tonight, St Strakosha, uh, Mopai, Reggion, Godos, Onyeka, Mbuemu, uh, Damsgaard, Baptiste and Jisoo uh, on the bench for Brentford, for Brighton, four changes to the 11 that started their 2-1 defeat at Liverpool on Easter Sunday. Brighton top goal scorer Joe Pedro returns after injury. Igor Julio, Facundo Buenanotti and Adam Lallana also come into the starting 11. Julio and Ciso is back from injury uh, and makes the bench tonight. For Bruggen in goal for Brighton, Veltman, Van Hecke, Dunk, Igor. Uh, in the back four, Gross, Baleba and Lalana uh, alongside uh, Buenanotti in midfield and Adingra and Jao Pedro in attack. Steele, Lamptey and Ciso, Modder, Welbeck, Estupinian, Afaya, 
Quaipion and O'Mahony all on the bench for Brighton tonight. So a lot of changes uh, for these sides and that is showing of course with them playing at the weekend and in midweek and also again playing at the weekend three games in the space of a week for uh, all of these Premier League sides so they're going to have to use their squads and with injuries it could be a bit difficult as you can see some names that we may not have heard before or were unusual to hearing starting in those teams tonight including the title chasers at Arsenal and Manchester City who have make, made big changes uh, kick off from the Etihad as well uh, around about nine minutes away quarter past eight kick off between Manchester City and Aston Villa which will mean by the time we get kick off in those we will have half time scores from the Emirates and the G Tech and at the moment Arsenal still leading Luton by one goal to nil. The Gunners pushing for that second goal but not able to find it just yet. Nine shots, two on target, Luton just the one shot. Uh, so far in the game uh, in that one so they are trailing by a goal to nil to the Gunners and it is still nil nil between Brentford and Brighton one shot on target a piece in that one at the GTEC Community Stadium right to the team news then for the Manchester City Aston Villa game then uh, for tonight let's have a look at those two teams as you can see them on your screen right now and it is interesting because there are big changes for Manchester City as well we talked about Arsenal's big changes but Erling Haaland, Mateo Kovacic and Kevin De Bruyne all dropped to the bench for Manchester City uh, as Pep Guardiola makes four changes to the team that drew with the Gunners last time out nil nil Jack Grealish, Jeremy Doku, Julian Alvarez and Rico Lewis are given starts. Nathan Ake is out nursing an injury. John Stones, who picked up a knock on England duty, is amongst the substitutes once again after being involved as a sub uh, or being on the subs bench. Uh, at the weekend formats of the city. The team is as follows Ortega in goal, a back four of Lewis, uh, Rico Lewis, Ruben Diaz, Mamela Kanji, and Josco Vardial in defence. Rodri Bernardo Silva in midfield, an attack of Jeremy Doku, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, and Julian Alvarez leading the line. On the bench for City, Carson Stones, Kovacic, Haaland, De Bruyne, Gomez, Nunez, Bob, and Susoho which would mean they have a strong bench if they need to change the game, City, late on against Villa. And Villa themselves, and it's not only uh, Manchester City that have some injury issues this evening, forcing them to make changes from the weekend. Villa as well, as for Aston Villa, Unai Emery makes five changes to the team that beat Wolves 2-0 on Saturday. Luca, Luca Dean, Clement Longley, Nicolo Zaniolo, John Durant and Tim Eric Bonham all start this evening. Ollie Watkins is sidelined with a hamstring issue. That was the big breaking news yesterday. Pau Torres, Alex Moreno, Yuri Tielemans and Leon Bailey all drop to the bench. So the Villas uh, 11 is as follows. A late change, by the way, just to confirm for you. Uh, Emmy Martinez was due to start in goal tonight. He was on the starting 11, but a late change to that Villa side with an issue in the warm-up for uh, Emmy Martinez means that Robin Olsen comes in at, at go, in goal for Villa, so even more injury issues there. A back four of S3 Concert, Diego Carlos, Clomont Longley and Luca Dina. In midfield, Douglas Luis, Eric Bonham and Zaniolo. And an attack of Morgan Rogers, Musa Diaby and John Duran. On the bench for Villa, I'd say one less on the bench, of course, as uh, Olsen would have been there, but he's on the pitch tonight. Uh, Gauci, Telemans, Pau Torres, Moreno, Chambers, Kessler, Hayden, Bailey and Kellyman all make up the bench for Aston Villa. And kick-off from the Etihad is a couple of minutes away. And we'll uh, recap that news for you fairly uh, shortly. Uh, but some big kind of drama that we could get tonight. These two, the two title chasers in action tonight. And as it stands, with Arsenal winning... At home against Luton, Arsenal will retake top spot over Liverpool, who stole it away from them uh, on Sunday afternoon. And Arsenal couldn't respond later on in that City game, but they did get a point out of that one. A point that is crucial enough to take them back top of the table with three points tonight. As it stands, Arsenal winning would take them back top, but of course Liverpool play tomorrow, so they can respond back again. City uh, can find themselves uh, on level on points with Liverpool, but can only overtake Liverpool tonight and jump up to second if they win by uh, six goals or more uh, or five goals or more because they will have a better goal scored record so five goals <laughs> City would need uh, to win by tonight 
but it is still 1-0 uh, to Arsenal, which means they have top spot and City will kick off fairly shortly. So it's all really interesting. And Aston Villa have their own hopes, you know. Aston Villa want to kind of open that gap to Spurs after Spurs' droppage of points in uh, East London last night. We watched here West Ham won, Spurs won last night. Aston Villa will really want to take that in their grasp and take three points tonight. Very unlikely because no one's been able to do it against Manchester City this season. Uh, unbeaten at home. Only one of two sides unbeaten at home this season in the Premier League City alongside Liverpool. Uh, as well, so City, a tough nut to crack at the Etihad, but Arsenal did a way of keeping them out at the weekend, and did a job, it'd be a very tough one uh, to replicate, but you need the points, and at this stage of the season, every team needs points for their ambitions, and we'll see which of these two teams, City or Villa, will come out on top. Our referee this evening, Darren England, VAR is John Brooks. Right, we will get kickoff from the Etihad in uh, just a moment. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back for kickoff. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Premier League Live. The fight for the title. Manchester City and Aston Villa uh, have their own hope. City looking to go to the four, their fourth successive Premier League title. Something no one has ever done in Premier League history. And Aston Villa looking for a place in the Champions League for the first time in over 20 years uh, for Aston Villa. So huge uh, points on the line in this contest tonight. And the title race is the one to keep your eye on. It's getting very interesting as we enter the final nine games of this season. Defending champions Man City lost their tag as favourites with the bookies over the weekend and are the Opta stats uh, predictor as well uh, after their 0-0 draw with Arsenal. So Liverpool take up that favourite spot as they lead the way and that three-point gap to leaders Liverpool as well as keep pace with the Gunners who at the moment would retake top spot having the lead against Luton. As they welcome Aston Villa tonight. Villa will need to improve their away record against reigning champions. If they're to get anything tonight, they have won just one of the last 30 away league games against defending top flight champions. Six draws, 23 defeats. And that was a 1-0 win against Manchester United in December 2009. The villains have lost their last nine such games by an aggregate scoreline of 29-7. To the teams tonight, Ortega starts in goal for City. Luis Diaz, Akanji and Vardiol in defence. Rodri, Bernardo Silva and Phil Foden in midfield with an attack of Doku, Grealish and Alvarez with big changes as Haaland and De Bruyne on the bench. For Villa, late injury concern as Martinez taken out of the starting 11. Olsen in goal. Consa Carlos Longley, Dina in, uh, in defence. Luis Irabonum and Zaniolo in midfield. Rodgers, Diaby and Duran up front. No Ollie Watkins, no Erling Haaland, not even the starting goalkeepers are here tonight. But this is going to be one fine contest. Manchester City against Aston Villa. Kick-off is next. Welcome to Premier League Live this evening as we get ready for a kick-off here at the Etihad and we have another goal from the Emirates. We'll get to that in a moment as we get ready to get underway and Arsenal's lead has been extended. So it's got even more difficult and more commanding for the Gunners tonight uh, with their re-ticking of top spots. Villa get us underway against a... Manchester City side who are looking to do what was called the impossible. 
No one has ever got four titles in a row in the Premier League history. City have that objective in their sights, but they'll need to really beat everyone in their way if they're going to try and do such a thing. Right. Villa will be a hard, tough, uh, tough nut to crack, but we know that Manchester City will not see any fear in that. Here's Agnolo to get Villa forward and get them an early corner off Mamela Kanji. That's a good positive start for Unai Emery's side. Uh, just to confirm then, that second goal for Arsenal. And they do lead by two goals to nil. And Daiki Hashi Hashioka uh, for Luton. An own goal from him has Arsenal 2 0 up uh, just before half time. So 2 0 there. Still goalless in the other game between Brentford and Brighton. I'll update you if anything changes in that one as Villa have their first corner of the night inside the first uh, minute or so. They got that corner. They're about to take it. As Douglas Luiz whips it in. Header across and headed away by City. The first header came from Villa. Flicked on and the City player could get it away. Foden to carry it forward for City. Bernardo Silva. Rico Lewis, who looks to be taking up that kind of inverted fullback role. Alongside Rodri in midfield. Rodri plays it out to Grealish. Jack Grealish, who used to play for Aston Villa, of course. Chips the ball into the box. Alvarez with a shot, but flashed wide by the Argentinian. Nice link up between Grealish and Alvarez there and Grealish did really well down the left hand side on the left flank cuts inside right footed chip ball over the top and Alvarez just offside when he uh, when the ball was played just a split second too quick from Alvarez and he flashed it it went wide nonetheless but good idea from City early on this will be the, th the, the idea you know Manchester City only one shot on target at the weekend against Arsenal uh only three games have had that amount of low low amount of shots on target this season. And two of them have been Man City Arsenal competitive games. So Arsenal seem to be City's grip tonight at the moment. Not able to get anything out of them. They only got a point off them. Arsenal got four points out of City this season. It's a switch ball from Akanji. Brought down by Grealish. Good start here for City. Grealish, the left hand side of the box. Cuts it across and... The cross is straight the way through and behind for a Villa goal kick. We can see the early attempts, the early efforts of City. They're trying to cause Villa early issues. Of course, Villa dealing with their own injury problems this season and this last week. Of course, Ollie Watkins, a massive blow to the side in attack. But of course... They will know that they do have bodies that can threaten, that can cause issues other than Ollie Watkins. Despite the players' massive impact on Villa this season, massive impact in the Premier League overall. He's the fourth top goal scorer. Ollie Watkins, 16 Premier League goals. Only one player has more than that, and that's Erling Haaland with 18, who's also uh, who's on the bench for City tonight. He's level with Dominic Solanke and Mo Salah, Ollie Watkins. We won't add to that tally tonight, or if... It seems to be the theme that's going. Maybe not for the next few weeks. Who knows what happens from Ollie Watkins. Villa will be hoping it's not long term because they need him towards the end of this season. They need as much as they possibly can get after their 2-0 win against Wolves. They'll be pretty confident, but they'll know that this is where it gets tough. The final... Eight games of the season, they're into their final eight. After this, they'll have seven more games of the season to go for Aston Villa. Do have a Europa Conference League quarter-final as well uh, over the next week or two, over the next few weeks, uh, to contend. Here comes City, Doku on the right. Jeremy Doku breaking into the box, trying to feed through to Foden. Doku again. Latched onto the Villa clearance, but Villa... Get it away long now. Here's Diaby. Does well. Breaks away from his marker. Diaby trying to play it forward, but 
straight into the wall of a Ruben Diaz, which blocked that pass off and gets City the possession of the football back. And there's an issue here for Villa because there's a man going down. I think it's John Duran. And that's a n certainly the last thing that Unai Emery will want to see with the loss of Ollie Watkins. John Duran has seen him replacement. It's just a collision. Clash of heads, really, with Josko Vardy also. Might not be anything more than that. And he's back to his feet, John Duran, so that looks okay. Just gone half time in the game uh, in both of the early kickoffs. Arsenal 2, Luton 0, and Brentford 0, Brighton 0 in their two fixtures. So at the moment, Arsenal leading the way. Liverpool in second, and Manchester City at the moment in third. Liverpool, of course, will play tomorrow night. They host Sheffield United at Anfield. Rodri spreads it out wide, finds Jeremy Doku, who tries to escape Luca Dina, but Dina a bit too committed there and ended up committing the foul, according to Darren England, and that'll be a Manchester City free kick on that right-hand side. do have uh, two cup semi-finals on the continent in Germany and in France. Leverkusen 3-0 up in their semi-final of the Pokal against Fortuna Dusseldorf. And PSG and Rennes is goalless in France this evening in the Coupe de France uh, semi-final. So we'll keep an eye on those two games as well for you to see who will make up those finals. Foden... Uh, over there to take this free kick from Manchester City. The body's in the box. Villa have committed a lot of bodies back. Alvarez left it. Foden with a left footed delivery. Straight into the hands of Robin Olsen. Who confidently collects the ball here for Villa. Of course, when the initial team news was released, Robin Olsen wasn't due to be starting for Aston Villa tonight but of course a bit of an issue pre-match and a late change to that a bit of illness we're hearing from Emi Martinez is why uh, he didn't make it for the starting 11 tonight but a confident grab there by Olsen will give him a bit of a breather just to relax his way into the game and fill the game out Kanji Doku Infield to Rodri. Rodri with a switch ball. Out to the left. Finds Grealish. Takes it down first time. Jack Grealish. Looking for bodies. Finds Bernardo Silva. Back to Vardial. Now Rodri. Tight spaces. Here's Grealish. Again down the left. Cuts inside. Looking to chip one in. Lewis in the battle. Spin away. Villa can't get it cleared. And City keep the pressure on again. But Villa scrambling to get it away. And City suffocating them to return the ball fascinating fabulous from City really good press and work there Villa just could not get it away here's Bernardo Silva Vardial Rodri and not on the same page there Jack Grealish but he does retrieve the ball just before it goes out of play up against Aero Bonham. back in field to Rodri Rodri eyeing up a shot, goes for goal, but pretty tame one from Rodri from the tight angle. And Robin Olsen, quick down to his right-hand side, makes the save. Yeah, it's not the most smooth of strikes we've seen from Rodri. He can certainly hit one. He didn't hit it anywhere near the way I would have liked there. As Ira Bonham gives it away high up. Here's Bernardo Silva, still taking on his man, Consa. Back to Grealish. Here is Jack Grealish trying to force it through, but Villa can get it away. But only for a moment or two because Doku will recover it again. Villa just have no out ball at the moment. Trying to play out from those situations. Play the short passes and City, just as they're retreating, are just winning the ball back again. Here's Rico Lewis. Villa struggling 
to alleviate this pressure that City are p applying on them early doors here. Foden. Space now. Doku on the right. Doku with a cutback. Shot goal! There's one from Rodri. That's a nice hit. And that gives City the lead. Lovely 1-2 touch football from City. And it comes off once again. And inside 12 minutes... City tick the lead. Aston Villa playing into their own problems again. Giving the ball away in simple areas and just not dealing with the threat. A free man in Foden, totally unmarked. Plays it wide to Doku. Doku, no one going with him, although he could be offside here. Very tight. Doku with a cutback and running onto it, streaming onto it. As cool as you like is Rodri to just side foot it past Robin Olsen. And into the back of the Aston Villa Nets. Lovely combination down that right hand side. And finished off by a man who always knows how to find the back of the net for City from those positions. 1-0. Although is it? Because there's a VAR check ongoing. And I did see it. Once I seen the first replay I thought is Doku offside here? It's tight. And the decision... It's very tight, that. It's very, very tight. The lines have been drawn, I think. I think they're looking for any sort of issues. Make sure. And the decision is goal. Very tight, but City get the goal. Very close decision, but the correct one has been got. And City take the lead. Arsenal have a lead. So the two title chasers looking to close that gap on this evening's leaders before kickoffs were Liverpool. That gap now closed. And there's just one point now separating the top three as it stands. Liverpool, of course, still to play, of course, but one point separating those three teams as it stands. Again, it was really good pressure from City and Aston Villa. I mean, I don't know if they looked at what Arsenal did against City at the weekends. I don't know, it's a tough job. It's not going to be easy to stop City from scoring. Of course, clearly, Arsenal were the first team in 57 games to stop City from scoring here at the Etihad. So, it's not an easy feat. But, Aston Villa just looked too open there. Dina with a throw in. Looking to respond quickly. A scramble in the box there as City do get it away. Although not fully cleared, but... Too far for Diego Carlos to chase, and that will run for a goal kick. Villa responded well there, but again, City able to deal with the situation. When scoring first, the last 78 Premier League games when scoring first, City, they've won 67. They've lost just once when scoring first in their last 78 Premier League games, which is a wonderful record. Absolutely incredible record, that. They have drawn 10 times, so it's a draw isn't out of the question if Villa keep it tight. But a defeat for City is rare. Dina. Down the line. Finds Diaby, who switched out to the left. Linking up with Luca Dina. Luke Dina with a cut back. City to clear it away with Rodri in the box. A aggressive response from Aston Villa. As Luis lifts one into the box and Duran with a shot. Good save by Stefan Ortega, but I think the flag does go up against John Duran in the process. See it again. Douglas Luis just has the time and space, spots the run, and the run just slightly too early there from John Duran. Good strike when he did get the connection with it. Lost, lost his balance and just had to flick his left boot at it straight at Ortega, but nonetheless. He was in an offside position. <laughs> Good play there from Villa. And that will be crucial. You know how they respond now to this. That's the, the crucial point. It's the cross in from City. Long lady headed away. Bouncing out of the box as Villa try and get themselves away from that threat. But again, good play by Lewis. They'll get it back. 
Vardiol. Grealish. Space on the left. Lays it off to Bernardo Silva. Back to Rodri. Lewis. Vardiol back to Rodri again. Um, yeah. With City and Arsenal both leading. It is kind of good responses from the two after drawing a blank at the weekend both against each other kind of cancelling each other right there to each defence neither attack really offered very much at the weekend it was defences that were on top in that game at the weekend very rare that we see that most of these big games this season have been absolute thrillers but that one a tight one between City and Arsenal the two two of the best defences in the league in terms of goals conceded Arsenal the best defence in the league but here comes Avila. John Duran couldn't link it up. But nice, tidy build-up play there from Villa. Just broke down at the last second, but good idea on that counter. Attacking City centrally, which is not something we see very often. Most sides would want to attack City from the wings, but nice idea there from Villa because they find a slight bit of space. Something they can work on. Indeed, and as I said, it's all really crucial how Villa respond to this now because they just falter, they allow City to kind of command and go for that second goal and kind of get the inevitable. Then it would really be just a, a simple procession for City tonight. But if Villa hold on in there, you never know. But here comes Bernardo Silva, chance here. Cross from Dina, or cross from Silva's cleared away by Dina. As Villa try and get it away with Diaby. He uses his pace to try and explode past Vardiol, but really good, strong defending from Josko Vardiol. Holds off Musa Diaby there. Let's see it again. Diaby battling. They've got a hold of each other there. Oh, well, Vardiol's got a real grip of Diaby there. Villa, not an awful home away record. Of course, I said about in the my opener, their awful away record against reigning champions. But their record this season away from home, seven wins, four draws, four defeats, is not an awful record away from home. That's the, the fourth best away record in the league. Here's Doku, though. Looking for the curling one, but off the back of the Villa defender, Clomo Longley, and into the hands of Robin Olsen, who will grab for Villa. But it just looks like City can find a real good opportunity from very little the spaces are so gaping for Aston Villa when they do get broke upon they do look very vulnerable that's the power of City the threat of City but also the fact that Villa are doing very little to kind of combat that at the moment it seems I don't want to be too harsh on them but at the same time you have to be honest and from what I'm seeing, it's just a bit too open from Villa at times. And that's where they're getting kind of carved open. City have already had more shots on target in this game tonight than they did at the whole of the 90 minutes against Arsenal at the weekend. So certainly more spaces against Villa, as you would expect tonight. But they've got space on the brick here, Villa. And look at the bodies. Here's John Duran. Four players forward for Villa. Lane, nice link up. Duran, 1-1. One, one. At Manchester City have been shell-shocked. Neither side could score here at the weekend. But inside 19 minutes, both have got a goal. And Aston Villa, it was crucial how they responded. No Ollie Watkins. But they have found the leveller. And it's his replacement, John Duran, who has found the net for Villa. City 1, Villa 1. I mean, I don't know what's happened here. Villa just go on the break. And City just never recover. I mean, I'm baffled. No one is running back from City. They're far too cool, calm and collected. And it's just nice build-up play. Nice link-up play. Duran linking up, I think, with... Uh, is Douglas Luiz, is it? Sorry, it's Morgan Rogers. Apologies. It's Morgan Rogers he links up with. It's just 1-2. And City just look completely out of it. 
I mean, I've no idea what way they're defending that. No one gets back into position. It's just far too easy for, for Aston Villa. But credit to them. They've got back into the game, although they feel that they have. There's an offside check going on here, but from what I can see here, that looks clearly onside for John Duran. Up against uh, Ruben Diaz. And from the, naked eye, uh, from the naked eye, that angle looks clear as day. I mean, you don't need to draw lines from this. Anybody and his, and his blind granny can see that he's onside there. And it's checked quickly, but it will be quickly cleared. And that will be a goal for Aston Villa. So two VAR checks to make sure that both, si both teams were onside in the build-up. Really nice one to give and go football from Villa. And finished off nicely by John Duran. Aston Villa back in this one. City 1, Villa 1. And the cheer from the away crowd inside the Etihad. And City taking an early lead. But pegged back just around 9 minutes later. 1-1. One, one. Could this be a real goal fest tonight? But again, it was... Uh, it, it, I was actually, while I was watching, I was like, is there a hint of offside here or something? Is the flag gone up? Because it just looked like Manchester City all stopped. All the defenders just stood in one position. And you're like, are you going to defend this? Because it just looked far too easy from an Aston Villa point of view. It just strolled their way through. And City just looked... I mean, it talked about Villa looking vulnerable at times, but... City looked vulnerable there. And not often, very, very rarely do you ever say that about City, where they look vulnerable. Because they very rarely do. And their record of conceding the least amount of goals at home this season has been discarded because they're now level uh, with Liverpool and Arsenal on that. All on 13 goals conceded at home. So the cross comes in from Doku there, but firmly held on to by Robin Olsen. For Aston Villa. But I have to say. I mean. Manchester City. They'll be disappointed with themselves. And I'm sure Pep Guardiola will be very few of disappointed. But they know Villa have got quality. Everyone knows Villa have quality. They are a v massively imp impressive side this season. And Aston Villa. Not an easy side to play this season. As many teams have seen. You know. They are a tough side. And Unai Emery has made them a real dogged team. And a, not only kind of physical battling team, but a really nice football team to watch. Although they're on the defensive here again. Rodri spreads one out. Doku with a cross. Again, too much. Grealish with a hit. Bouncing down. Oh, and too wide for Holson to grab. But Grealish claiming it took a deflection. I don't think it did, but... It bounced off the ground, if it's what he's looking for. Ball from Do uh, Rodri to out to Doku. Doku, initially, oh, it looks like he's overhit the cross, but it bounces, it feeds its way out to Grealish on the left, and he just strikes right through it, hits the ground, bouncing up, catches out Olsen. I think he just misses the ball, and it goes wide, and a goal kick given. But again, a close one there from Grealish. Of course, Grealish, of course, used to play for Aston Villa. I've already mentioned that tonight. He's already got a few boos <laughs> from the Villa fans in that away end tonight already with a few of his touches. It'll be the City fans that will be the most joyous if he does find the net tonight against his former club, Jack Grealish. And of course, with these City changes, these have their kind of... They have a place to fight for if they want to try and find a place into this city side before the end of the season and be a part of the latter stages. I want to perform tonight. The likes of a Grealish, a Doku, Alvarez indeed as well. You know. One thing. <laughs> it's just uh, going to give you a nice stat there, but Villa are city on the attack again. Yeah, it just blocked away. Uh, Pep Guardiola's men shouldn't really be concerned uh, about uh, not winning tonight because they've won the 17 of the last 18 
Premier League home games against Aston Villa. They've lost just one, including their last 13 in a row since a 2-0 defeat in April 2007. 17 of the last 18, 13, all of the last 13 against Villa at home has ended in a City win. Not, wor not to worry. Although, Unai Emery's team did beat City 1-0 in the reverse fixture, of course, this season back in December, and it probably should have been more comfortable as they outplayed the champions at Villa Park, having 22 shots at City's goal, at, at goal to City's two shots in that game. They destroyed City in that game at Villa Park. <clears throat> and they completely closed City down. And now Villa on the brick here. Rodgers. As again Diaby tries to brick away from Vardy all, but Vardy all with the challenge. And puts it out for the Villa throw on the right hand side. Second half is underway in the in, in the capital this evening at the Emirates and at the GTEC Community Stadium. It's Arsenal 2, Luton 0, and Brentford 0, Brighton 0 in that game as well. Uh, at the GTEC Community Stadium. Don't forget, more Premier League football for you tomorrow. Two more games to round off this midweek action. Uh, live from 7.30, Liverpool against Sheffield United from Anfield. And then we'll be on air uh, on live from uh, around 8, 8, 8 15 for Chelsea against Manchester United from Stamford Bridge tomorrow evening. Two sides in European contention. And we'll see uh, which one will get the better of it tomorrow, of course. Manchester United have a huge game to prepare for for Sunday as well. So, back-to-back -back huge games for uh, uh, Manchester United. The way to Chelsea and then home to Liverpool on Sunday, which we will also have live here on LFS for you. So, a huge one. United looking to put a dent in Liverpool's title charge. See how Liverpool respond to their two rivals playing at the moment. City are dropping points, but Arsenal comfortably winning. And we'll see how Liverpool react to that tomorrow night. There's Foden in the box. Cuts it back to Alvarez. Rodri. Forced out there was Foden. Had to go back. Spread wide now to Grealish. Back to Vardiol. He looks to take a touch. Vardiol chips it. Back post looking for Doku. And a pull there on Zaniolo on the cover. But it will bounce back to Olsen, who will grab for Aston Villa. It was good defended by Nicolo Zaniolo. Just chested it back to Olsen. Had to adjust there at the last second, Zaniolo. And did a very good job. There was a few, few shots of handball from the crowd, but nothing from the players. And rightfully so, because there was no handball. Long ball forward from Villa. Duran to hold it up. Pulled down in the process, but doesn't get the free kick. Not enough of a pull, according to the referee. City trying to play it forward to fold and give it away. Here's Zaniolo. Trying to find a forward pass. Plays it wide to Dugadinha. Douglas Luis. Here a Bonham. Bit off target. Finds Luis, though. And now Longley. Back to Olsen. Under pressure in the press from Foden, but Villa aren't going to go long. They're playing it out from the back here. Konsa. Back to Robin Olsen. That's composed from Aston Villa there. Not rushing themselves. Long late. Back to Olsen. Now he will go long. Robin Olsen trying to find John Duran. Headed away by uh, Akanji. And City get the ball back again. Rodri. Doku. Pull on Doku there. Not enough according to the referee. Doku complaining but Villa running away with the ball here. Here's Zaniolo. Dina. Back infield to Douglas Luis. Nice first touch away from Rodri. Swings it round to Zaniolo. Back out wide to Dina. Nice Zaniolo again. Nice quick footwork and nice quick passing from Villa there. Luis. Carlos. To Consa. On the halfway line. Clomon Longley to Diego Carlos. It goes long. Ball in behind here. The run made by Musa Diaby. There's bodies on the edge of the box here. Diaby looking for the cutback. Trying to find Zaniolo, but the deflection and City get it away. 
That was really good play by Villa again. That ball in behind looks a threat. And pressure on City again as Villa applying those challenges. And then they do get the free kick there. Rico Lewis filed. But initially they wanted a file for... I think it was Doku that went down. But again, no file given initially by the referee. But he did give it for the second one. You can see Darren England, the referee, just not wanting to give... A free kick for every single situation. Just letting the game flow a bit more with a few of those situations. They're going to have a pullback here for a free kick to Villa. Grealish right in the face of referee Darren England there. Has to be careful. Jack Grealish, heavy touch. And then, yeah, it's a Douglas Luiz. Does well, actually. Really well, Douglas Luiz to adjust. Just gets the ball away. And Grealish just with a, a clip. On the Villa man, it is a free kick. And well spotted by the referee to pull it back. And Grealish will need to watch himself because cannot be shouting at the referee like that. He's still going at the referee. Ruben Diaz is over there. He has the captain's armband for City tonight, Diaz. Jack Grealish has just been booked here. And I expected that to come because... He was talking himself into the referee's book there as he continued to argue with Darren England. So it's no surprise that he's got an early booking here, Jack Grealish, for his complaints. And that is him, the first player to receive a yellow card tonight, Jack Grealish. He's not making himself any more of a, or any less of a, an enemy or a villain of Aston Villa with those types of complaints early on, but... You can see his frustration, but, the, I mean, you do file the man. The man does get the ball, and the ball's already gone before you make the challenge. You did get, make the heavy touch, so you weren't in control of the ball, so you can't make that argument. So it was a fair decision by the referee. And nonetheless, Villa take the free kick and said he have the ball back again. So, in the grand scheme of things, what was it all worth? Who knows? Here is uh, Ruben Diaz from Manchester City. Vardy all under pressure. Spins back to Stefan Ortega. Vardy all in fields. Back to Ortega again. Ortega spreads it out to Bernardo Silva. On the left flank. In field to Lewis. Out to the right hand side. Finds Manuel Akanji. Switch out from City there by Diaz. Out to Grealish. On the left. Making that infield run. Bernardo Silva with a chip. Alvarez trying to get on the end of it. Blocked that time by Longley. Kept alive by Silva. Rodri. Now Lewis. Bernardo Silva again. Pressed high. Lewis lovely through the lines. Finds Grealish. Now Rodri. Can he find a pass? Cuts it back. Lewis cut out there by John Durant. He was well... Had his eye well marked on the edge of that box to clear it away for a City throw. That was really good from John Durant. Spotted that, knew the pass was coming, anticipated it and cut it out. Denying City a, shoot, a shot at goal there. Look at how City recycle it and spread it into space. It's just so nice when City do things like that. Although they get caught in possession there from Akanji. A bit too complacent on the ball. Here's Duran, round the corner. Finds Rogers. Back to John Duran, who has himself free. And he gives it back to Luca Dina. That was good pressing from Villa again. Just waiting for City to get a bit too complacent and nick the ball away when they can't. At any given opportunity. Ball in between the lines. Again, Villa held up there was John Duran, but he does play on. The referee tells him to get up because he felt he went down too easily there. But I think that was a foul, referee. I think that should have been got, should have got a whistle there for Villa. But nonetheless, he's letting things flow. Here comes Doku. Lovely skill. Beats pass one. Doku with a cross. Took a deflection. And Villa get it away. Here's Rogers. Duran. Nice Agnolo. They're going to switch it out to Diaby, but he's not that quick. 
the header back to Ortega from Vardy all catches Musa Diaby out there. That was good from Villa, uh, from Villa but calm from Manchester City. Vardy all trying to find Bernardo Silva in behind but Diego Carlos is there to cut that one out. It's a competitive game so far these two sides. After an early bit of dominance from Manchester City, where they look to be really taking massive control of the game, it's kind of evened out. Although here comes City again. Grealish trying to eke a bit of space, but the body's in the way to see him out there. Committed from Villa. Akanji. Rodri. Very compact in the middle. Seems like Villa have sorted that issue out. Well, here's Foden. Alvarez back to Lewis. Alvarez! Good save by Olsen. Alvarez had a good opportunity there, but Olsen denied him with a strong left right. Or <laughs> left right. A strong right leg to put it away and a good save. And then City with a throw in. Give the ball away. Rodgers down the flank to Diaby. Clearly a counter-attacking approach from Aston Villa. Here's Musa Diaby. His body's up again for Villa. Rodgers. Weird bounce. Rodgers with the ball in. Akanji can't get it away. And the ball bouncing in the middle. Villa battling for the ball again. Bounce goes against them. And then they give away a free kick on Rodri. Bit scrappy that moment there. Between both teams. But here comes... Bernardo Silva, or, or it's actually, sorry, Jack Grealish. And he was pulled down by Douglas Luis, and that gets an instant yellow card for the Villa midfielder. <laughs> really good direct running from Jack Grealish. And Douglas Luis tries to be sneaky with that pull, but Darren England right behind that, and seen it all day long, and... No hesitation from the referee to give that free kick and a yellow card to Douglas Louise. And a good, good area for a free kick here for City. You never know. Got the players. Certainly the quality from free kicks to take this. So a free kick for City. Just to the left-hand side of the 18-yard box. And I, if I did take a guess at the distance, if I can get the wide angle, I'm seeing the behind-the-goal angle, which helps me no, no, not at all. I would say around about just about 24 yards exactly from the cut of the grass. A bit left of the D from that side, so... There's a bit of an angle on it. Grealish and Alvarez over it for City. Referee sorting the defensive wall out as they get ready to take this free kick City. Whistle goes. Grealish. Alvarez though. And it's over the bar. Grealish left it. Alvarez with a shot. And it's off target from Julian Alvarez. Too high from the... Argentinian, and that goes behind for a goal kick. So, time to check up on the two early games. Still no changes in the scorelines in any of those games. Arsenal still leading Luton by two goals to nil at the Emirates. Luton have had a bit more of an attack and threat, but nothing really clearly cut as of yet uh, in the second half. And Brentford and Brighton still holding each other to a goalless draw. At this moment in time, as Lewis with a cross, headed away. Akanji does well. Steps in. Keeps the ball for City. Here's Doku. Rodri. Now Doku. Cross denied. Blocked. Cut back out to Julian Alvarez on the right flank. Infield to Lewis. Back to Diaz. Lewis again. Intricate play. Rodri finds Foden. Foden iron up for the shot. Blocked off. Rodri keeps it alive. Diaz with a chip. Away by Consa. And Bernardo Silva keeps it to find Grealish. 
Fire the all. To Rodri. One, two, touch football from City again as Foden trying to break into the box, but well marshalled by Villa again to get the ball away from the danger zone. Good physicality from Doku though. Wins it back. Feeds it through. Alvarez looking for a cut across. Alvarez goes himself, but that one's not going to hit the target either. And it's going to fly over and behind for another Aston Villa goal kick. So those European uh, Cup semi-finals uh, in Germany in the DFB Pokal semi-final is still Bayer Leverkusen 3, Fortuna Dusseldorf 0, uh, Jeremy Frimpong, uh, Amin Ald Adli and Florian Wertz all on the score sheet from three first half goals which has uh, Leverkusen in a commanding position and on their way to a DFB Pokal final where they will face uh, FC Kaiserslautern. Uh, in the final after their defeating of Saarbrücken who put Bayern Munich out of the competition Saarbrücken but they've beaten at the semi-final stage and uh, Kaiser Schlauten uh, will face the winner of Leverkusen or Dusseldorf and at the moment Leverkusen commanding 3-0 lead there and PSG uh, lead uh, Stade Rene uh, in that one in the France Coupe de France semi-final uh, killing Mbappe on the score sheet he missed a penalty early on Mbappe but on the score sheet from open play just a few minutes after that has PSG in front and they will fa the winner of that game will face Lyon in the final uh, after their 3-0 win last night in the other semi-finals so uh, exciting setups for those finals to come Olsen goes long for Villa again looking for Duran Duran does get a bounce to the ball but Diaz can get it away but Beaten to the ball initially was Greel, uh, Grealish was concert, but City not giving away the free kick. But Bernardo Silva giving the ball back as Olsen fires long again. Can Duran being that kind of target man up front, and he felt a, a, a hit on the head there. Felt he was fouled again, John Duran. The referee's going to have to stop it because Duran is holding his head, so it could be a possible head injury. So. Stoppage here. Mm. Again, six and one half a dozen of the other, really, there. Not much in it from Ruben Diaz against John Duran. Duran making a noose of himself, and Diaz just out muscling him. The referee, of course, erring on the side of caution and right to do so. But don't forget, as I mentioned, two more games for you to round off match week 31 in the Premier League. Tomorrow night, Liverpool, Sheffield United and Chelsea, Manchester United is tomorrow. 7.30 from Anfield, 8.15 from Stamford Bridge. And then European football, the quarterfinals of the European football competitions are back next midweek as well for you. The Champions League Tuesday and Wednesday night and the Europa League on Thursday night alongside Aston Villa in action and the Europa Conference League also on Thursday night next week. Quarterfinals of all of those competitions all live on LFS for you. And we'll inform you of what games we're doing next week. Uh, next week. We'll inform you over the weekend about those. The City come forward again. A man goes down in the box there. Ravella was concert, I believe. And Bernardo Silva, the man, deemed to have fouled. So it will be a free kick to Aston Villa. And despite that early pressure from City, that early dominance, that early kind of few moments where they look to be completely in control against Villa. Villa have done well. They got their equaliser fairly quickly and they've kind of responded pretty well. They've kept it at a level footing. Not allowed City many massive clear-cut opportunities since then. Strong, composed, controlled, structured in defence. And early on I was afraid because they did look vulnerable at times, Villa, from those situations. But I think it's certainly... That's why I'm not a manager and Unai Emery is. Because <laughs> it's seemingly worked out for them so far in this first half. But still a bit to go into the last minute of the first 45 here at the Etihad. It is 1-1. Bernardo Silva. Across to Rodri. Closed down by Douglas Luis and wins the ball, does Luis. Battling and lost the ball and Douglas Luis gives away another free kick. On a yellow card, remember, has to be careful. Jack Grealish making the claim that he should get a second yellow, but Darren England not budging on that, and City are all around the referee.
claiming that it was a second yellow, but no! It's just not a second yellow. It's a free kick and nothing more on Phil Foden there. It's just a slight pullback, but it's not anything massive. It's just no need. How many times do we see that from City? Crying around the referee as always. Uh, four out of minutes uh, added on to the end of this first half then. City will have another free kick. A bit closer than the last time. A yard or two closer. Around about the edge of the D this time. It's just still a bit to the left. So a few yards closer for Julian Alvarez. Maybe he'll hit it again. Or Foden's around it this time. Maybe he'll get an opportunity. Grealish as well lurking. A couple of options here for City from this free kick. Will they give Alvarez a second shot? Will they switch it up? Foden to take the strike. And it's in. Completely caught out the Villa keeper. They weren't going to allow Alvarez to take it again. Switch it up and take it with the left footer of Phil Foden. And no stopping that one into the bottom corner. Lovely from Foden and City restore their lead. City 2, Villa 1. And Robin Olsen shaking his head, but he could be... <laughs> he's completely just shocked by that. Did not expect it to come anywhere near him. And it's a lovely one from Phil Foden right through the wall. It was Constance and Sanyoli just split between each other. And if there was no gap there, it would have hit the wall. But it sneaks its way through and finds the back of the net from Phil Foden. Terrible from the wall. Should not have opened that gap at all. But a very good finish from Phil Foden to restore Manchester City's lead. 2-1. And now, Villa find themselves behind again. And just as it would have been a very good kind of leveller to take to half-time. 1-1, it would have been a very good point to just take stock and regain the con kind of composure at half-time and get a few details on. But conceding just before half-time completely changes the kind of half-time team talks from both sets of managers. Both managers... Well, here comes City. They might extend their lead. Silva with a cross blocked. The flag was up anyway against Bernardo Silva, so it wouldn't have counted if it had to find the net. But again, it's just... It'd be disappointing for Aston Villa going in at half-time. So they held on so long, and they were looking well in the game. And City get a free kick. Quite avoidable, really, but... Defensively, should have been stopped. But nonetheless... It's now up to Aston Villa to respond again. Get back on level terms again. Which they know they can do. They've already done it once tonight. But it, now for City it's all about taking it when you have it. Foden, now Alvarez. Good block by, I think it was Longley that got his body on the line. Him and Lucadinha threw their bodies at that one. And it went out for the throw into City. But City are looking for the killer before half time here. Lewis, Doku, to Rico Lewis, now Bernardo Silva, City just looking to, again, as they like to do, pass you to death and carves Villa open, but Villa, I'm sure they'll be desperate now to hold on to half time and not make it any worse than it already is, Grealish, down the left, back to Vardial, across to Foden, Back to Akanji. Switches it out to Grealish on the left-hand side. Up against Konsa. Grealish chops back onto his right. Cuts it back for Rodri on the edge of the box. Rodri, a bit hesitant, but does find its way to Grealish. Grealish, now to Bernardo Silva at the byline. And Alvarez! And the, he and the save over the bar from Ruben. Or Robin Olsen denies Alvarez again. What an opportunity. Centre of goal. All he had to do was head it down, Alvarez. And he just headed it straight. And I think it was hitting the crossbar anyway. And Olsen did palm it over the bar. That would have been a huge goal for City to take into half time. Alvarez to take this corner for City. That will surely be the last action of the half. Alvarez to take it right footed. Right swinging corner. 
whipped in again and punched away by Olsen. And that is the half-time whistle from Darren England. Half-time where City do get the late goal in the first half to take a lead into the half-time interval. Villa will be frustrated with themselves, getting themselves back on level terms and maybe probably just a bit too passive to hold in on in there until half-time and they end up conceding from that free kick. A very preventable goal. And I'm sure Unai Emery will know that more than anyone. And at half-time, it is City who lead. But Aston Villa not out of this one yet. Half-time, Man City 2, Aston Villa 1. Welcome back to Premier League Live. Halftime at the Etihad. It is Manchester City 2. Aston Villa 1 at the break. Uh, the second half's uh, coming to a close very shortly into the last 15 minutes of the two early kickoffs tonight between uh, Arsenal and uh, Luton and Brentford Brighton. And it is still the same scorelines that they were from the first halves. Arsenal 2 0 up against Luton at the Emirates uh, and Brighton and Brighton. Uh, Brentford still nil nil in that one. Uh, neither side able to find the net just yet in that one. Although uh, not for a want of trying. Uh, Brent Brighton have had 15 shots. Brentford six in that one. So a combined 21 shots from uh, both sides, but neither able to find the net just yet. Uh, right, we've already we'd already seen a, an array of Premier League action for you last night. Five games, including some big results at the bottom as well. Huge win for uh, Nottingham Forest in the relegation battle, and their four points deduction eradicated in the space of two games. Their draw against Palace at home at the weekend, and then that three-one win against Fulham last night uh, gave them four points in their last two and kicks them three points clear of Luton. Uh, in the relegation zone, Everton got a big point on the road away at Newcastle. They held in there. Uh, Newcastle took the lead, but Everton held in for a point. Bournemouth, back-to-back -back home wins, not tight one uh, wins, and one goal was enough this time around. And Palace, back-to-back -back away, to uh, back -to -back, uh, away, bad results really for them. And Bournemouth were the uh, the team to beat Palace uh, last night, winning by one goal to nil. Bournemouth, uh, Burnley uh, took the lead against uh, Wolves last night. Uh, but they couldn't hold on uh, and got a 1-1 draw. So still a big point for Burnley uh, last night. And then a 1-1 draw between West Ham and Spurs as well in their fixture. <clears throat> and then the games as it is tonight. So the table is quite interesting looking as it stands at the moment. And we'll start at the top half, which will concern the title race. Just as I'm watching Arsenal here come forward. Trossard across to Tomiyasu with the shots just wide, narrowly wide from Tomiyasu there 
not too far away from Arsenal there. Pushing for the third goal that would wrap that game up, but Luton keeping it alive still at 2-0. You never, never know. Late drama could be happening. But Arsenal, as it stands, will be top of the Premier League table. Retaking top spot from Liverpool, who uh, will play tomorrow night uh, against Sheffield United. Arsenal leading the way on 68 points. Uh, Liverpool on 67 and City as it stands with them winning they'd also be on 67 but they're behind Liverpool on goal difference Liverpool a better goal difference four better off goal difference than City as it stands at the moment then the team that City are beating Aston Villa they make up into fourth but of course remember Villa lose tonight they will only be two points ahead of uh, ahead of Tottenham in fifth but Spurs will have that game in hand they travel to Chelsea that game to be rearranged uh, they will head to Chelsea, which will mean if they win that game in hand, Spurs, they will go above Villa and a point ahead of them in fourth. United in sixth. They also play tomorrow night. They're uh, a good nine points behind Spurs. They have a game in hand on Spurs, though, so that could be a help, but still nine points adrift of them. West Ham, Newcastle, Brighton and Wolves all make up the top ten. In the Premier League, Brighton, of course, getting a draw at the moment. If they win tonight, Brighton, they could fi they would find themselves inside the top seven if they can convert a nil-nil draw into a win of any sort against Brentford tonight. At the moment, they're not doing so. In the bottom half, at Bournemouth, the big win, back-to-back -back wins for them, carries them a good six points and a good distance clear of any real threat of anything this season. They're on 41 points, a point above Chelsea. Chelsea do still to play this week and have a game in hand over Bournemouth only a point behind them Fulham and 39 points after back-to-back -back kind of poor results for them as well the draw at the weekend good comeback draw uh, against uh, Sheffield United but conceding six goals against two relegation threatened teams who haven't scored many goals this season is a concern for Fulham defensively who've conceded 50 goals this season which is not good uh, reading for Marco Silva's side 39 goals, uh, 39 points for them and a good while back Palace on 30 Brentford on 28 uh, or they will get 28 they'll be on 28 with a draw this evening uh, which would take them six points clear of relegation zone which will be a huge point for Brentford but they'll want more uh, and they should probably deserve more against the United at the weekend they did get a point from that one and probably if they can convert a point into three tonight that will be huge to take them away from those relegation threatened sides. Everton uh, come in 16th after their 1-1 draw with Newcastle. A big point for them. 26 points on the table and Forest on 25. Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United all make up the bottom three. Luton caught adrift with their uh, currently losing and Forest having won last night. That gap has opened up to three points. Considering Luton before the weekend had a, th a point advantage over Forrest, but Forrest four points from their last two games. Luton seemingly getting nothing uh, out of their trip to North London over these last couple of days. Spurs away and Arsenal away, tough fixtures, but at the moment they're getting nothing from either of those games, which means they will be behind Nottingham Forrest in the table. Right. Into the last uh, less than 10 minutes to go on those two uh, early kickoffs as well. We'll keep you up to date if anything changes in those. Uh, in the DFB Pokal semi final uh, in Germany, it is easy street for Bayer Leverkusen 4 0 up against Fortuna Dusseldorf now Florian Wertz uh, with a penalty in the second half has extended Leverkusen's lead and it looks like they will uh, be heading to the DFB Pokal final against Kaiserslautern where they will be the favourites of course Kaiserslautern uh, of the second tier in German football in France it is half time between PSG and Rennes in the Coupe de France semi-final uh, in that one that was a 10 past 8 kickoff, so the second half should be getting underway fairly shortly in that one and PSG have a narrow 1-0 advantage over uh, Rennes at the moment Kylian Pape failed to convert from the spot after 37 minutes but he did find the net just 3 minutes later uh, after a Fabian Ruiz assist and Mbappe with the finish to give PSG the lead in that semi-final and if they win they will be facing Lyon in the final after their 3-0 win last night in the other semi-final so updates from around those games and the three Premier League games as well where Arsenal leading Luton by two goals to nil Brentford Brighton still goalless and Man City 2 Aston Villa 1 our key game tonight is at half time so 
couple of minutes away from the second half getting underway at the Etihad, but we're going to stay with the latter stages of the early kickoffs and most notably Arsenal's game against Luton. Arsenal going to make another change. Emil Smith Rowe's going to make way. Of course, not been in the favour of Mikel Arteta this season. A lot of heavy hitters in Arsenal, and he's been part of the squad mostly. Emil Smith Rowe, a few sub appearances, but a start tonight was huge for him to impress for the Gunners tonight, and he's just been substituted there. Uh, for Arsenal, so a good shift of a good 85 minutes for Emil Smith Rowe. Sees his night come to an end, and that was Arsenal's fifth substitution of the night. They've brought in Ketia Rice, Tommy Asu, and Gabriel Martinelli all onto the pitch tonight, and that final change there. Seems to be a comfortable night at home for Arsenal. Another home clean sheet, another home win, and that would uh, give them a very good home record. Only one home defeat this season, Arsenal. That was against West Ham. At the end of 2023, only Liverpool have a better home record than Arsenal at this season. Liverpool unbeaten at home. 12 wins, 3 draws. They play tomorrow night. They can extend that tomorrow if they win. Uh, Arsenal, 15 games uh, uh, played at home this season. Won 12 if they win this one tonight. City, 16th game at home this season. This would be their 11th win uh, after their draw at the weekend against Arsenal. City and Liverpool, the only two unbeaten sides at home this season. Uh, what it means for Luton, though, you know, Luton had that four-point advantage uh, on Nottingham Forest, and although much more difficult games, two away games compared to Forest, two home games against sides, they should be beating the likes of a Palace and Fulham if they're going to want to kind of escape the relegation zone for us. They need to be beating sides like that at home. They did get four points out of six out of that, but Luton, tough away games. But Luton need points as well. You know, Luton haven't won since the end of uh, January when they beat Brighton 4-0 at Kenilworth Road. Since then, they drew 4-4 with Newcastle, 3-1 defeat to Sheffield United, 2-1 defeat to Man United, 4-1 defeat to Liverpool, 6-2 defeat in the FA Cup to City, 3-2 defeat to Aston Villa, 1-1 draw to Palace, 4-3 defeat to Bournemouth, 1-1 draw with Forest, and a 2-1 defeat to Spurs, and would be a 2-0 defeat to Arsenal if they lose tonight. That will be a long spell without win a win. That will be a good 10 games in all competitions without a win for Rob Edwards' side. Three points in the last nine Premier League games is not good enough, especially against sides at home. The likes of Sheffield United at home should be getting something out of that game at the very least. A, a good point away at Palace, but maybe could have been more. So, needed to get something out of that Bournemouth game where they were 3-0 up in that game, remember, and Bournemouth with the second half comeback, destroying them 4-3 in the end. That was a big giveaway of three points. L Forest at home was their opportunity to really get that advantage on Forest, And then, of course, these away games. They've got... Some decent home games to come, Luton. They've got Bournemouth at home which uh, on Saturday, which will be a huge one for them. They've got Brentford at home to come. Uh, they've Everton at home, which will be a huge one of them. Two sides of the two battling against relegation come the end of the season. And Fulham at home before the end of the season. There's some big home games in there that they need to pick up points, Luton, if they're going to escape relegation this season. We will see. The last couple of minutes being played out in those two early kickoffs. The second half uh, from uh, the Etihad where Villa are trailing 2-1 is on the way in a moment. Do stay with us.
Welcome back to Premier League Live. Tonight, Man City against Villa. Don't forget, one more Premier League focus game from this midweek. For you to come tomorrow, we're at Stamford Bridge as Chelsea take on Manchester United. Chelsea at the moment in the bottom half, but still not out of the question of European football this season. Chelsea, uh, they are in 12th. They are only a couple of points behind the European spots. Manchester United a bit further ahead on 48 points in 6th. Not enough to chase Champions League, but certainly enough to command a Europa League spot Manchester United and they want to extend that uh, and get a big warm up before they play Liverpool at the weekend that is tomorrow at 8.15 kickoff from Stamford Bridge right the second half uh, at the Etihad is uh, not long away because the players are just coming back out into the tunnel and we will see the restart of this game in a moment or two, of course. Uh, they're coming into the late stages and those early kickoffs, as I have been banging on about all of through half time. Uh, they've just hit the 90 minute mark at the Emirates. It is just gone 90 minutes, and they will have four added minutes at the end of that game. Already into added time at uh, the GTEC, where it is only three added minutes, and they've already played half of that. So that game should be coming to an end fairly shortly. And as it stands, they will be both only picking up a singular point from that game but I'm sure Brentford might be the happier of the two sides because they've been under the cosh they've given away 23 shots against Brighton tonight but no breakthrough for the visiting Seagulls at this evening so far Brentford still holding them to a nil-nil draw and it looks like as it stands that will be the way it will finish we'll confirm those for you in a moment once the final whistles go from those two games but back here at the Etihad, it is a big second half as City look to keep the chase on the two teams above them. And three points would be enough to close that gap to just a point between them, City and Liverpool, or them, Liverpool and Arsenal in the top three, which would be huge. With Arsenal winning and City winning, it will be now back to Liverpool to respond tomorrow night. And Liverpool can retake the lead of the league if City and uh, Arsenal both win tonight. Liverpool will win to go back top of the Premier League table tomorrow night and a two points clear ahead of the weekend's fixtures as well. You never know. There's another 45 minutes to go here. Anything can still happen. <clears throat> Anything can still happen. But City unbeaten at home this season. And Aston Villa, they would love to be the first, but it's not very likely that they will be the first, as I said, considering their record against... Uh, current holding champions of the Premier League title. Well, one thing that City will know, they haven't lost any game in any competition since their defeat at Villa Park in early December. They've now won 19 of those last 23 games, unbeaten in 23 games, won 19 of those, drawn just four in that period of time, two of which uh, came against their uh, big rivals in Arsenal and Liverpool on that occasion. And that space of time where they drew both of those games. But here come Villa on the break early on in the second half. Here's Diaby down the right-hand side. It's time and space and tries to put the cross in. Blocked by Vardy Oling. Villa get an early corner, as they did, or throw in, sorry, uh, to start the second half. Looked like it escaped for the corner there, but just at the other side of the corner flag. So a throw in will come Villa's way. Consa over to Tick. Consa. Back to Eric Bonham. To Diego Carlos. Switches it out to Luca Dina. Dina on the left for Villa. Swips it into the box, but straight into the hands of Ortega. Too close to the city keeper. Final score from the GTEC Community Stadium. It's finished Brentford nil, Brighton nil. So a goal a straw between those two. And we saw our first goal a straw since January. When Arsenal and City drew 0-0 here. And we've seen two in the space of a couple of days. As City come forward. Oh, and Doku denied by a big save by Olsen there. And Olsen firing it clear out of the danger zone. And away from danger for the moment. But a good positive response there from City. To start the second half. As I was saying, we hadn't seen a goalless draw since early January. Before the... Draw, goalless draw here at the weekend. We've now seen two in the space of three days. Always the way. 
said he get the advantage here. Jack Grealish. Uh, find Bernardo Silva and Silva denied again by Olsen. Good shots again from City. Good movement. Edge of the box. Bernardo Silva maybe just offside. Very tight that. And then straight at Robin Olsen who puts his body on the line. Throws himself at it Olsen and out for the corner to Manchester City. So corner here early in the second half. Alvarez to take. Whipped onto the front post. Away at the front post. By Zaniolo. And now Diaby can get Villa on the break. Look at the pace from Diaby. Villa on the attack. City in retreat. Diaby chops back. Looking for the pass to Douglas Luiz. And City flood bodies back. And deny any chance of a pass there. As they look to break down the other end. Alvarez hounded by Euro Bonham. And that will be a free kick to Manchester City. Final score at the Etsy, or the Emirates, sorry, Arsenal 2. Luton nil, so another win for Arsenal. Another three points on the board, and they head back top of the Premier League table at least for around about 24 hours at the very, le uh, the very least at the moment uh, with that 2 0 win. And another clean sheet at home for Arsenal uh, against uh, Luton. Luton, their struggles and relegation continue. So confirmation of those two earlier games complete. Now just one game to focus on. This one, City and Villa. Diaz. Doku. Doku. Back to Rodri. Kanji now down to Doku on the right flank. Doku. Chops past Dinya. Has to come back though as he took a heavy touch. Foden. Rolls a back for Rodri. Rodri now to Doku on the right again. Not much movement for City there, but here's Rodri. Trying to open up the spaces. Spreads it out to the left hand side down for Grealish. Back in field to Rico Lewis. Back to Diaz. Akanji. Foden. And wide the Doku again. Compact, deep defending from Aston Villa. And Zaniolo holding off Doku. Doku has to go back again. City will just change their approach once more. Diaz, although they'll come straight back down the right hand side. Here's Foden, find a bit of space. He can run to into. Now Lewis looking to flick it on. City looking for the challenge there. A fair challenge on Rodri. As Villa win the ball back and go long. And Duran cannot get on the end of that one. And City will get a free kick. As Duran tried to win the ball. And he committed a foul. Mm. Yeah, there was a fair it was a fair challenge on Rodri. We just seen the replay of the Rodri one. Where Rodri did go down. <laughs> But it's nothing on that from Diego Carlos. And then as John Duran went up for the ball, he kind of connected with the head of Manuel Akanji. And a free kick goes City's way. But Villa win it back instantly. Good work from Duran. And he's seen how to play. And the City will give away the throw in to Villa. Just inside Villa's half. It's all about Villa staying in the game in this second half. They just can't allow City to steamroll them. To the final whistle, because City will have no problem in doing that. But considering they do have options off the bench as well, where they can change the game. And Vardy all there. Again fouled. It could be another good tactic for Villa. Just giving away free kicks, slowing the game down, breaking it apart as much as possible. Oh, heavy touch there from Diaz. Almost lets Morgan Rodgers in, but unfortunately he couldn't carry the ball with him. Morgan Rodgers and City recover that. Here's Grealish. Across to Foden. Tries to chop away. Grealish keeps it alive. Finds Lewis. Lewis to Doku. In the box. Jeremy Doku finds the space. Has the shot straight at Robin Olsen. Straight down the throat of the Villa keeper. Who's as grateful as anyone to 
see that ball go into his hands. But again, it's the burst of pace from City. How crisp their passing is and their persistence. Just not give the ball away. It's relentless. When they do give it away, Villa try and break on them. But they've had again that counter-attack from Villa's broke down pretty quickly. Grealish. Infield to Rodri. Foden tried to play it on. Lewis does scramble to rescue the ball and will row it out of play. But only for a Villa throw. And Doku wasn't that quick to try and chase that one down. But I mean, Villa keeping themselves in and around it at the moment. <laughs> In their own defensive third, albeit at this moment in time, that's where City are dominating them, but I feel they just need to find an out ball at the moment. They're giving the ball straight back to City on a couple of occasions, and City are just reapplying the pressure. Here's Doku again. Doku flicks past it. Dina cuts it back, looking for Foden again. Good track in there by Douglas Luiz in his own box, and he's got the brick of the ball here from Zaniolo, and Douglas Luiz has space, finds the pass at Diaby. Diaby on the edge. Can he squeeze it through? Oh, and the shot from Douglas Luiz is saved over the bar by Stefan Ortega. Good work by Villa on the counter-attack. Really nice reverse ball by Zaniolo. Finds Douglas Luiz, and he has time to find the pass to Diaby. And Diaby, I think, he's just going to try and squeeze it to find the shot. But he spots Douglas Luiz at the back post, unmarked, and he just finds the ball, and Luiz curls it. Leaning back a bit, but Ortega does make the save, which gets Villa the corner. And Douglas Luis, who took that shot, will take the corner. Left hand side for Villa, right footed. Lots of bodies in that six yard box. Luis with a. Oh, flicked on and away by Ortega again, who had to be switched on there to palm it away. But from the front post, Villa flicked it on and Ortega. Did well to just parry it away from danger. And Ortega, who hasn't been called upon much. That's a fantastic save. Flicked on it by Longley there. Flicked on to into the box. And Ortega did really well to not be caught out there. And denied. They've the best. Defence from set pieces this season, City. The fewest goals conceded from set pieces this season. Two. Arsenal second in that list on five. So City well clear on that front. But here comes City themselves at the byline. Alvarez cuts it back to Doku. Doku looking for the space in the box. Cuts it back to Rodri. Rodri, who was facing his own goal there, turns to get City going up front again. Alvarez, Lewis. Doku, running his way through, Doku lovely, finds Grealish on the left, Grealish with his shots, unnecessary, that one blocked and away from Villa, but Grealish receives it again on that left, and went straight back at Villa, but again couldn't find the pass or the space, and there's a foul there by Bernardo Silva, which will give Villa the free kick. It's an unnecessary kind of swinging leg there from Bernardo Silva. Just a bit unnecessary. Because the defender was under pressure. The defender was facing his own goal and he had to get it somewhere. There's no need. Just alleviated the pressure on Villa there, which exactly what they wanted. Consa. In the to the middle. Ira Bonham. Finds Rogers. So he's down the right hand side. Gets his feet. In a mix up there and the ball goes out of play for a city throw. Aston Villa certainly do have the threat from the counter. Or on the counter. It's about picking their moments. Just as they did a few moments ago there. They just waited for the right moment to find the space. Remember, 
even if Villa do level it again, there's no guarantees they'll get anything out of this because City have an absolute... I mean, they've got an armoury on the bench there. Haaland, De Bruyne. I mean, those two <laughs> could literally tear Aston Villa apart if they wanted to. If they come on, so Villa will need to be even more concentrated if they do enter the fray tonight, those two. Foden. Across to Rodri. Just inside the Villa half. Now Lewis. Foden. Space now for City on the break. Here's Foden working his way through. Tried to go all on his own there and blocked off. As Villa scramble it away. And Consta trying to get Villa on the front foot there. Foden stayed down. No foul, said the referee. As Villa come on the break now themselves. Luis. Finds Zaniolo. Duran and Diaby up with him. Zaniolo. Looking to go himself has the shot. But that was wasteful. Straight at Ruben Diaz. And then Rodgers trying to win it back. Gives away the throw in. But again the space on the counter again for Villa. It's certainly there. They can threaten but it's just about. That, making that final pass. Come off for them. That's what's important. They do have the ability and the pace. And there's certainly spaces in there for them to counter on a, a Manchester City. Aston Villa. Remember, they do need to be compact at the back as well. Be careful of City's threat. Nonetheless, not that that goes without saying, to be honest. It's a good battle from the throw in. Villa won the ball. Luis, who keeps them on the in the possession. Era Bonham. Heavy touch by Diaby. But Villa win it back off Grealish. Diaby. Now Consa. Has to go backwards to Diego Carlos's Villa. Now find themselves almost all exclusively in City's half now. Douglas Luis. Through the middle. Finds Rogers. Spreads it out to the left. Luca Dina. Look over the cross. Whips one in, but again, not much of a threat in there. And Stefan Ortega can come and grab comfortably and get City going up front again pretty quickly. Space for Doku on the right hand side. Villa retreating. Doku linking up with Foden, trying to go in again. Blocked off that time by Longley. Longley follow him all the way out. Doku recycles it to Rodri. Sprays it out to the left-hand side. Finds Grealish. Plays it into the box. Bernardo Silva gets the ball stolen away from him. As Villa try and play it up to Duran again. But beaten off the ball by Vardy all as Duran. Back to Grealish. Now Rodri. 61 minutes gone. City 2, Villa 1. Rodri breaking the lines and the shot and the goal. Phil Foden. It's not one of his most <laughs> clean finishes, but he'll not care much there. And he finds the third goal for Manchester City. And their passing completely opens up Villa once again. From the edge of the box. And Phil Foden. Slice of luck, but nonetheless, City won't care one bit. And it's now, they have a bit of headroom. And a bit of control much more on the scoreline now. Manchester City 3 Villa 1 and it's just persistent from Rodri. Doesn't give up on the on the opportunity. Beats past his man and just squares at the edge of the box and Foden just unmarked and just left footed side foots it. Hits the inside of the post and into the net and 3-1 City. Celebration from Guardiola. Frustration for Unai Emery. And City have a bit of daylight now. City 3, Villa 1. And Phil Foden with his second of the game. Gives City a comfortable lead now after he gave them the lead once again at the end of the first half. He's now extended that. 15, 16 minutes into the second half. 3-1. He's now on a 
Hat trick now. Phil Foden. Villa are going to make a change after that goal. And it looks like they will be under no threat later on here now, City. From any sort of Aston Villa comeback, but Villa are making changes. Confirm those changes for you in a second. Try and give Villa something different in attack. Not that their attack's been anything wrong. At times, it's been quite threatening, but it's their defence that's at times been a bit vulnerable, a bit open against City, but they can do that to any team in the country. And they are. Arguably, they haven't done it. They didn't do it against Arsenal on either of the two meetings. But you know what I mean. They can do it. They just didn't. They have the ability, most certainly, City. That's what I mean. Triple chains then from uh, Villa there. Diaby, Irobonum and Luis all coming off. Replaced by Leon Bailey, Yuri Telemans and Callum Chambers as well. So a triple change for Unai Emery's side there. Some fresh legs on and maybe at this moment it's more about just managing this scoreline at the moment Villa not making it any worse holding it at 3-1 and just not giving City any more room for, for for more goals but here's Doku cuts it back Rico Lewis misses the target probably should have scored from that position they took it on the half volley and sliced it wide of the left post but a good opportunity for Rico Lewis there. Just doesn't catch it right, but good opportunity again for City. I'm sure he'd be disappointed with himself there, Rico Lewis, but again, it's not the end of the world. Still 25 minutes to go here at the Etihad Hard at the moment. There's only one way this result is going, and that is Manchester City with a win. Bouncing back from that droppage of points against Arsenal at the weekend. But of course, remember, a win tonight would put them back level on points with Liverpool behind them on goal difference. But certainly well in the mix of that relegation, or that relegation, that title charge once again. Between the three sides will only be split by a singular point before Liverpool play tomorrow evening. Uh, and fields. Liverpool will have the chance to go back top on two points clear of Arsenal if they win tomorrow night, Liverpool. And after them playing first at the weekend, Liverpool, they'll have to sit tonight, react to what they've seen from their two rivals and re respond tomorrow night knowing they have a job to do to retake the top spot in the league against it's top again well it would have been uh, it was at the start of the match week top against bottom but of course it'll be second uh, against bottom of the league Sheffield United tomorrow night Rodri to Rico Lewis remember this is a city side 3-1 up at home against Vela Vela who are in fourth and they don't even have the likes of Erling Haaland or Kevin De Bruyne on the pitch. Plus they have injuries at the back with no Stones, no Kyle Walker, no Nathan Ake, no Edison as well. You know, this is a City side that's probably more close to their second string side than their starting 11 or their best 11 that we usually see from City. So that will give them even more confidence that they're doing this job without their best players or without kind of their best team lovely endeavour from Grealish wins the ball back finds it to Bernardo Silva cuts it back for Rodri Rodri shot blocked and Villa will come clear with that Rodgers but again really good work by City playing it around and just being patient and Villa just throwing bodies on the line to get anything in the way of it
Aston Villa, Aston Villa who've won four of their last six in the league, including that 2-0 win against Wolves at home on Saturday. They'd only lost one of their last six. Man, uh, Aston Villa looks to be two out of seven here tonight. And Villa are unbeaten in the last five Premier League away games. Although their last defeat on the road was in Manchester. That was against Manchester United back in December. The Villains last had a longer unbeaten run away from home in the competition between November 2008 and February 2009. Seven games unbeaten on the road. But it looks like that unbeaten run away from home will be coming to an end tonight. Uh, as it stands. Unless there is mad drama laid on here. But that looks unlikely at this stage of the competition. Villa again. Physical on the edge of their box. But then they give it away. And a shot goal. Phil Foden. Hat-trick hero for Manchester City. Gave them the lead in the, in the first half. And has extended their leave even further in this second half. Three great goals from Phil Foden. Very different quality goals. But they will all count for the same. And seeing City to a big three points here tonight. Manchester City four, Aston Villa one. Phil Foden on the hat-trick. They give away the ball. There's City on the edge of the box. Foden wanted a free kick for it. And then City, or Villa play out. They give it back to City. And then Foden, losing his balance, <laughs> may I say, strikes it and finds the top corner. Somehow. <laughs> I mean, if Unai Emery was frustrated and f furious earlier on in the game, he will be absolutely seething. On the sidelines now. Aston Villa. Throwing it away in the second half. But Phil Foden. Will not care one bit. And he's got a hat trick. Here tonight. Manchester City 4. Aston Villa 1. They're going to make that change. Alex Moreno now Villa. Alex Moreno on. John Duran off. So an extra defender. And they might need him now. <laughs> um, of course. They don't want this to get any worse. Remember. If City do score uh, and win by five goals tonight, which isn't out of the realms of possibility, they're 4-1 up, 20 minutes to go. If they get another two without response, they would go up to second ahead of Liverpool on goal difference, ahead of tomorrow's game again, uh, between Liverpool and Sheffield United. So they could get second spot tonight, City, if they uh, win by five goals here tonight. Here is Grealish to try and help them to do so. Grealish. Out to Foden. Back to Rodri. He's under pressure. Does stave off that challenge. But absolutely... Just relentless for Manchester City in the second half. Villa just haven't had laid a glove on them. In terms of Lula's defensive work, it's just been completely torn to bits by City in this second half. And the fact that City have had so much of the ball means that Villa, even in attack themselves, have left one or two chances really in this second half at all. And they could have been could have been a very different lay out of things in the second half of Villa did take their earlier chance Douglas Luis with that shot that was saved and then the save from the corner afterwards could have changed the dynamics of this as Morgan Rogers is in the box though oh just stolen away by City that was a good move by Villa but re restricted attack so far we've seen from this second half Consado Telemans Long lay out to the left to find Luca Dina. Moreno. Man City are going to make changes themselves. They haven't made a change yet. Villa have made four. In this second half. City without a change. They, I don't think they made 
many, if any, changes against Arsenal at the weekend, City. Sorry, they did. What am I talking about? They made three changes. They made an injury sub and then they made two changes early in the second half. I'm talking complete rubbish. Nonetheless. I mean, goal difference could come into it. I mean, we talk about the City being able to go second. Uh, if they get the a few uh, two more goals, they would go above Liverpool on goals scored if they get two more tonight. But goal difference could come into conversation about the title. Uh, it's a bit stretched. Arsenal have extended their goal difference to plus 48 tonight with that 2-0 win over uh, Luton. Liverpool on plus 40 and the City on plus 38 as it stands with those that three goal extension of that goal difference with the sc score line tonight. But goal difference could be a big player in it if things get tight. Here's Grealish. Plays it across all the way through. Julian Alvarez was in there but flashed right across the six-yard box there from Jack Grealish. There's a issue here for Nicolo Zaniolo. So we'll see. He'll get a bit of treatment, maybe. The City make a double substitution. Kovacic and Mateus Nunes coming on. Rodri's going to be one of those uh, players making way. He's going to be replaced. And also Bernardo Silva. So Nunes um, and Kovacic coming off. And Bernardo Silva and Rodri coming off there to be replaced by those uh, two midfielders, Kovacic and Nunes. Uh, final score from the DFB Pokal semi-final tonight. Leverkusen, easy work of Fortuna Dusseldorf. 4-0 winners at the Bay Arena tonight. Leverkusen, they're into the Pokal final. They will face... Uh, opposition uh, from the lower division, a uh, lower division uh, in the uh, uh, the final, uh, Kaiser Schlauten, uh in the the final against Leverkusen in the Pokal final to come. Kaiser Schlauten of the second division in Germany, and still PSG lead Ren by one goal to nil into the last uh, few minutes of that game, and the last seven minutes of the game at the. Uh, the Pac de Pass and Kylian Mbappe's goal separates the two sides at the moment. Just less than 15 minutes to go here at the Etihad. It is Manchester City in cruise control against Aston Villa. Leading by four goals to one at this moment in time. It's now the third straight game away at Manchester City where Villa has conceded three or more goals. It's the most they've conceded at the Etihad uh, since they lost by five goals to nil back in November of 2012. Um, with a brace from Sergio Aguero and Carlos Tevez on that in that game and David Silva on the score sheet as well. That was 12 years ago, or 11 and a half years ago, was the last time that they conceded more than four goals away at City. They conceded four on two previous occasions in March 2016 and uh, May 2014 when they were beaten by four goals to nil on those two occasions. The last time they lost 4-1 at the Etihad was in October 2011. Aston Villa in a 4-1 defeat, of course. So, another substitution for Villa. Their final one of the night. Nicolo Zaniolo uh, off. And he's just been replaced by Amari Kellyman. 18-year-old Amari Kellyman. From the under-21s. Of course, with injuries now. Coming into the Villa seniors bench. He was on the bench against Wolves at the weekends. Also made an appearance... For Aston Villa in their 4-0 win against Ajax as well. Did Amari Kellyman came on in the 83rd minute for Douglas Louise. Came on for Zaniolo this time round. And he has been on the bench on previous uh, senior games for Villa this season as well. Amari Kellyman. Conso wanted a foul there in the box. Yeah, it's not a penalty. It's... Very little in that one. Um, City actually get the free kick 
a bit further away, just a bit further up the pitch than that uh, for the moment there. So set piece going City's way after Villa wanted a penalty. I'm sure Villa will look to bounce back from this defeat tonight. Not an unsurprising defeat, but they're back at home uh, on Saturday, a 3 o'clock kickoff away uh, at home to Brentford in the Premier League. A 3 o'clock kickoff on Saturday at Villa Park. Here comes City. No, not done tonight. Here's Foden, who might not be done himself. <laughs> Spreads it wide to Doku. Looked like he was going to shoot there for a moment, but closed down. Doku. Foden. Doku. Villa's last Premier League defeat. It was only a few games ago when they were beaten 4 0. At home by Tottenham. They were actually down to 10 men in that one. They were two already 2-0 two down in that game. And they conceded two game a goals in added time. To lose 4-0 to Spurs at home. A shot here from distance from Mateus Nunes. Is over the bar. But again City wanting to add more to their goal tally tonight. And Villa's... Again, their last defeat on the road. I did mention it was away against Manchester United on Boxing Day. And they were beaten 3-2 on that occasion. They were actually 2-0 up in that game, Aston Villa. John McGinn and Leander Dundunker with two first-half goals. And then a second-half comeback from United. Two from uh, goals from Garnacho and a Rasmus Hoyland winner. That was his first goal in English football. Rasmus Hoyland that game that sent Villa defeat. That was their last Defeat on the road. Uh, City have just made a double change. Doku and Foden uh, coming off. Foden will get the match ball at the end of the game. With a hat trick. And they've just come off. And been replaced by Oscar Bob and Sergio Gomez. For Manchester City. Villa, not many defeats uh, in 2024. Only four defeats this calendar year. 3-1 uh, defeat to Newcastle. 2-1 defeat to Manchester United. 3-1 defeat to Chelsea in the FA Cup. That was three home defeats in a row in that spell. And then that home defeat to Spurs. So all four of their defeats this calendar year have come at, at Villa Park. Had some big results away from home. In the Premier League this year. 5-0 win away at Sheffield United. 2-1 win away at Fulham. 3-2 win away at Luton. A few draws in there as well. Uh, don't forget City are back in action as well. A quick turnaround for City. They played Sunday half past four. Playing tonight as well. So Sunday, Wednesday. And then they're back in action on Saturday. Lunchtime. And they head to Crystal Palace. So a trip to the capital. To South London and to face uh, Crystal Palace at 12.30 on Saturday for Manchester City. And then even quicker because they're not getting any more sort of a break. Because they're back in action next Tuesday night when they have a trip to the Bernabeu. Which is not an easy game nonetheless uh, for Manchester City. They head to Real Madrid next Tuesday at 8 o'clock in the Champions League quarterfinals. So a quick turnaround for City. Four games in the space of just nine days. It's actually quite crazy that. How quick that turnaround is. How relentless it is. And that's so important that they haven't even had to bring on Kevin De Bruyne or uh, Erling Haaland tonight at all. Manchester the City. Here's Oscar Bob trying to get in on the scoring action, but Mar well marshalled out of play there by Luca Dina. And it will be a goal kick to Aston Villa. <laughs> and one thing that 
is going to continue. City haven't kept a clean sheet against Aston Villa. Now in seven straight meetings with them. Their last uh, clean sheet against Aston Villa came back in uh, January of 2021 uh, when they won by two goals to nil here. Since then they've conceded at least one goal in all of the uh, last six meetings. And then of course this one would be the seventh where they failed to keep clean sheet. They've only failed to score once in that spell of course which was the reverse fixture this season. Uh, that was away at Villa Park in December in that 1-0 defeat. Uh, at the end of 2023 so they're not able to deny Villa a goal against them but they are able to stop Villa from winning against them in the mass majority of cases in recent years that defeat to Villa in December the only outlier in that long run of a long unbeaten run for City against Villa their last defeat Prior to that, against Fulla was back in September 2013. So it was a real 10-year spell that Aston Villa had gone winless against City. And they're not going to go back to back and do the double because they're going to be well beaten here tonight. City with 10 shots on target, making up for that failure to score on Sunday. And they've certainly not struggled in front of goal here tonight against Aston Villa, scoring by four goals. At Leading by four goals to one, heading into the final five and a half minutes. Bella will get the free kick there. Foul on Yuri Tielemans by Mamala Kanji. All the stats dominant for City tonight. 70% of the ball, 20 shots, 10 on target, a 2.5 XG as well. Fella have only 30% of the ball, 7 shots, 3 on target, less than 0 0.7 XG tonight for Villa. So firmly one-way traffic. And remember, City could have had more. They've had four big chances in the game. And considering they've scored four, They've missed three big chances tonight. So that if they'd have taken all of their chances, they could be 7-1 up here, which would be a real absolute killer. And I'm sure that's the kind of punishment <laughs> that Aston Villa kind of gets for playing them straight after City just being held out for the first time in 57 games here at the Etihad at the weekend. So that's what you get. The game after that is going to be an absolute corker and Manchester City have created chances galore tonight and have deservedly taken the three points. We'll take the three points out of this one. Look to be a real possible banana skin, a possible another game where Sevilla, a difficult side, a tough nut to crack at times this season, have been a difficult opponent for many teams. That's why they are in the contention for Champions League football, but... On the night, City have been by far the better side. And almost there. Alvarez just lost control of the ball. Couldn't feed on to the pass from Oscar Bob, which was good pressing by the City man initially. This fella looked to come forward to get a late consolation, maybe. Here's Leon Bailey. Bailey. Across. Finds Kellyman, who had the shot from the edge of the box, but... That one blocked off. Telemans. Out wide to Consa. Consa lifts the ball in, but his cross firmly into the hands again of Stefan Ortega. Final whistle from the game in the Coupe de France semi final, and it's a fair enough, a comfortable night for PSG. They've gone through. To the final, Kylian Mbappe's sole goal of the game has given them that pass to the Coupe de France final where they will face Lyon uh, in that final to come uh, in the next few uh, next month or so. So the Coupe de France final is confirmed. PSG against Lyon.
Consa. Back to Carlos. Long lay across to Cons or uh, Dina, sorry. Tillemans. Our 90 seconds of the 90 minutes to go. We'll see how long we'll be added on. I'm sure if the referee's any smart man here in England, I don't think he would add on too long. I think he'll just want to end Villa's misery, put Villa's misery to an end tonight and give City the three points as quickly as possible. Add on as little amount of added time as he possibly can. That's a lovely infield touch by Bailey, but then he slipped, but tried to keep the ball in alive, but Give it away in the slip there. <coughs> Phil Foden will be lifting up the match ball that currently Jack Grealish has a hold over his foot. Grealish with a cross. Bob couldn't flick it on. Alvarez couldn't strike it either. Alvarez still has it, trying to squeeze it past Robin Olsen, who gets in his way and blocks it off there. Again, Alvarez should do better from the first one. Bob just lays it off to him and he just hits it first time straight at the Villa defender Clum along lay and stayed with it but probably should have done better there. Alvarez. Don't forget uh, one more game for you tomorrow night live on LFS. Live audio commentary of that one. Chelsea against Manchester United. A Premier League classic but neither of these two sides chasing top table uh, kind of positions this season looking for any sort of European football out of these sides and they will face off tomorrow as the run-in continues and this is the race for Europe Chelsea in 12th Manchester United in 6th both can still get European football we'll see which one picks up the points tomorrow 8.15 on LFS 90 minutes have surpassed and the referee just adding 4 minutes on to the end of the half as he did in the first half so Four more minutes. Villa will have a corner here, though. Maybe a late consolation on the cards for Villa. Never know. That could help their goal difference. That could also come into the play against Spurs for that fourth place. They're actually behind Spurs on goal difference at the moment, so they want to recover that a bit. So, oh, cross comes in, and Alex Moreno was breaking into the back post, but couldn't connect with the ball. Corner whipped in right at the back post and Moreno was there but just couldn't kick the ball. Completely miss, miss hit it. Didn't get anywhere near it. And that was a good chance for Villa to close the, the deficit. Not that it'll do anything at this late stage but close the deficit, deficit they could have done there and as I said that could be a crucial point because they're plus 17 goal difference at the moment is one worse off than Spurs with a plus 18 and Spurs with a game in hand could extend there could take the lead uh, if they win their game in hand and go above Villa with a point above them but also could go ahead firmly on goal difference both of which Villa had a good commanding control of a while ago. So we've just over two minutes to go at the end of this one. And it doesn't look like there's any doubts what, what what's going to happen here now. But here comes City. They want to add a fifth to it. And Grealish's back heel couldn't find Alvarez. But City not giving up the hope yet. Good work from Vardiol. Gets into the box himself now. Vardiol cross. Oh! And Sergio Gomez, his shot. Wide of the left post. I think it comes off the left post. Vardiol across to Gomez. And Gomez hits the air. Hits the outside of the left post. And behind for the goal kick. Keeper rooted. And if it had just found the inside of that post, it would have been five. But... Gomez not to be there. Ninety seconds to go. I can't say Robin Olsen's had a bad game in the Villa goal. Called in at the last moment. I'd say he's had a pretty decent game. He's made seven saves tonight, Robin Olsen. It's probably on his defence that he's been so highly in action and 
the strikes from Phil Foden's goals have been quality goals. Not much the keeper could have done about them. I mean, the free kick goal, very easily avoidable from Villa. They just hold firm with their their wall and they wouldn't concede. The third one, it's just, I mean, a bit of luck. A bit of luck for City, but again, it was really good play. And keeper couldn't do anything, had no reaction time whatsoever. And then the fourth one from Foden. Not that I'm discrediting Phil Foden whatsoever. Whatsoever. The, the finish. The fourth one. I mean, the keeper could do nothing about it. The goal is sensational from Phil Foden into the top corner. The fourth one isn't avoidable. The first one, maybe, he could have done better. But again, you know, he's made seven saves tonight. Robin Olsen. So you can't really say that he's done much wrong other than that. City have had 11 shots on target. Four of which find the back of the net. Seven of which were saved by Robin Olsen. So you take that into account. If you have 11 shots on target against your goal. Against Manchester City. Your keeper's not going to be able to stop them all. And tonight. They, he hasn't been able to nonetheless. Uh, it's City that get the win. Quite comfortably in the end. After Villa pegging them back from a one goal lead in the first half. To get back to level footing at 1-1. Foden took the lead, gave them the lead just before half time, before he added two more goals to his first to claim the match ball and City to claim three points at home once again. That one game spell without concede or without scoring at home. It's now fifty eight out of the last fifty nine home games that they have scored from, and that is a wonderful run of records. Despite that goalless draw. But they're back to scoring ways. And quite convincingly so at home. And that gets them back. Closing down the two teams above them. Liverpool and Arsenal. Liverpool still to play. They'll still have their say. In this midweek set of fixtures. But Arsenal and City have had theirs. And they've both commandingly won. At home this midweek. Again. Eight games down in this match week and not an away win yet. Is there one to come tomorrow? We didn't see one at the weekends and eight games in midweek. We haven't seen one either. Will we see one tomorrow night? We will find out. Do join us for Chelsea Manchester United tomorrow night. We'll keep updates from Anfield as well as Liverpool take on Sheffield United. As Liverpool look to retake top spot. Chelsea Man United will be our focus at 8.15 tomorrow. But for now, City, comfortable winners. Phil Foden. The hat-trick hero to carry City to another huge three points as they look to head for four titles in a row. They still have Liverpool and Arsenal in their way, but they will be keeping their hands on the coattails of those two teams. Final score from the Etihad, Manchester City 4, Aston Villa 1. Good night.